Hi, um, my name is Yuen Tao. I'm a PhD student at UC Davis. I'm a student of Alan Hastings. And today I'm going to talk about transient animal home range. Um, the entire talk is going to be fairly theoretical, so knowing that most of the audience here are real biologists, unlike me, I'll try to keep it uh, short and sweet and hopefully easy to understand. So transient dynamics is one of these things that has uh, been picked up in population biology a few years back. People are looking at uh, synchronies and, and uh, meta communities and so on. But um, despite the fact that movement phenomena itself is intrinsically a very dynamical event, um, transient analysis is not something that's been done quite yet, especially in the theoretical realm of animal home range. And the reason for that can be summarized in this following slide. So what you're seeing here is the reference equation for uh, animal home range. The top row there, that is basically known as the Vection Diffusion Equation, otherwise uh, Fokker-Planck Equation. So what that calculates is the change in the probability density function of an individual's location at any time or space. This could be 1D or 2D. And the first term on the, on the right-hand side, that's the vection component. So that determines sort of the gravitational pull an animal has towards, for instance, say, a dense site or some kind of a nest. The second term on the right-hand side, that's the diffusion term. So that includes um, basically a random process uh, through the animal's movement. But then if you break down, if you take out the um, advection and the diffusion co uh, uh, term and then take, take out its coefficient, you can see that it gives you this very, very ugly expressions for both of them. Um, so these are functions of both the distribution of uh, displacement rate, so how far an indiv individual can move per time increment, as well as uh, an orientational distribution that determines sort of um, where an individual would go relative to the position of its if it's a uh, home range center. Due to the complication of this equation, um, usually mathematicians can only solve this as a steady state solution. And what that means is you cancel out the left hand side on top there, you, you set that to be zero, and you solve for the solution that way. And typically in two dimensional space, to simplify the matter even further, uh, they do what it's called a polar Laplacian transform, which means instead of looking at uh, x and y coordinate, you just basically look at, um, you look at the uh, position of the individual as a function of a radius or distance away from the home range center. So we have the solution down there, and, and as a result of this, um, one can conclude while in one dimensional space, this is the home range, you have this concentration at the home range center at zero, and in two dimensional space, you also have kind of this aggregate um, probability density at the center. And usually this is the end of the story. However, in recent years, there have been um, numerous empirical studies, field studies, that look at what is known as home range transient or territorial transient. So the top row there is basically a recent study done in 2006 by Luca Borger uh, that surveyed the home range size of the European road there across Europe. And, and they found out that um, in a lot of cases, home range actually oscillates through time and it has some kind of a seasonality element to it. And on the bottom row, you, uh, there's a study on kind of um, on lion territories and especially on how it drifts in time, how it replaces um, the, the uh, previous territory you left by a, a conspecific, for instance. But the bottom line is territories or home range or any kind of a space use, they are very organic entities. They move, they drift, they expand and collapse. Um, so in, in a sense, uh, us theoreticians, we are really falling behind in terms of um, uh, spatial ideas, uh, particularly pertaining to animal home range, comparing to the empiricists, that is. So how can we finally make this push towards transient analysis? on the theoretical end. Um, one model that uh, me and my collaborator have, have come up with is to essentially uh, borrow methods from op optimal foraging theory and introduce two major ideas. One is this movement by modality that has been recently emphasized in, in, in many papers, but also a decision-making process uh, concerning sort of the, the, the particular movement mode an animal will pick up. So, 
Um, this whole movement by modality concept can be summarized basically as a distinction between very uh, statistically distinct movement modes, whether those are exploratory or encamped, sometimes they're named ranging and sedentary, but in either case, they can be, uh, uh, they, there, there's a mechanistic difference between the two. So the figure here basically indicates sort of um, the orientational differences between encamped mode and exploratory mode. Exploratory mode is more diffused um, in, terms of, in terms of its coverage around the home range center. And um, in relation to the previous models we have shown here, we can basically summarize the two different modes by two different sets of uh, vection and diffusion coefficients. And so basically, you can say they both have a very distinct beta coefficient that is just a, a cumulative composite of those two parameters. So next, we um, construct a set of fitness functions for the individuals. Um, in the interest of time, I did not explicitly uh, write out the equations we used, but I'm happy to show you guys the manuscript we have uh, ready. Um, but essentially, we um, develop these uh, fitness functions that encapsulates an individual's uh, state variable um, and uh, a number of external factors pertaining to the local habitat. Those can be competition level, resource availability, some kind of a sensory limitation, um, and then also, of course, the beta parameter that encapsulates both the um, motion capacity as well as the navigational capacity of the individual. So in some sense, uh, this framework uh, kind of takes in um, all the major components in the movement ecology paradigm. So um, X here, uh, the state variables in, in our model specifically, uh, we, we use age. Um, and, and we link that to a certain uh, movement behavior an individual is capable of, of performing. And so the, the figure here um, basically summarizes the result of doing some kind of an optimization based on the three strategies uh, above. Uh, two of the strategies is basically um, always to perform either exploratory or encamped mode during a period of time. And uh, the third strategy is, is more dynamic. The individual is able to switch between the two depending on environmental uh, conditions as well as its own state variable at the time. So uh, the left um, side of that, that tense shape kind of interior is basically a parameter space where uh, the only exploratory kind of strategy is the optimal thing for the individual to do. And likewise, on the right-hand side, it is, uh, the individual is better off to always be encamped no matter what. And in the uh, tent interior, that's of course where uh, there's more of um, be, uh, movement diversity um, stemming from movement by, uh, by modality. And there's also a vertical gradient so it's not, it's not just all the same, but uh, again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to show that. So if you set one of, or one or more of the uh, environmental parameters as a function of time, as you see up there, you basically get um, a transformation of this modal regime over time. So in this particular case, you have essentially a folding down effect, which then folds back up depending on the particular uh, time of year you're looking at. Of course, if you construct your models differently, the type of transformation you see will also be different. Um, in the ones that we have explored, sometimes they twist, they turn, but essentially we can generate uh, a number of different time, um, time series regarding the home range size as a direct result of the uh, structural transformation of the modal regime. And what we can get from all of that is um, a series of basically general predictions regarding how an individual's home range size relates to all these uh, numbers of uh, drivers, for instance, age, as you see here. What this indicates is that as an individual matures, it's, uh, the magnitude of its home range size basically shrinks over time. Um, but at the same time, the variance along the mean uh, has more of a concave shape. So what this means is that the juvenile and the adults tend to be more uh, stubborn, if you will, in their home range behavior, whereas the uh, uh, median age individual tends to have more um, flexibility uh, in terms of its, its movement response. And on the right-hand side, what we have there is we basically deconstruct our um, environmental 
uh, parameters into individual sort of variables. So, and, and we can consider their effect on home range amplitude separately. Um, so w without, without denoting exactly what they are in this presentation, uh, it, it's only important to know that you can basically, by doing this, you can attach different combinations of these environmental parameters to certain habitat type. So you can see on the bottom there, that's a grassland habitat going, going up. There's a set aside, and then eventually to an uh, herbaceous crop habitat. And uh, what this shows is that there is this amplitudinal difference depending on where the individual resides. And both of these um, predictions actually match up with uh, sort of Luca Borger's um, empirical finding. So uh, we have just talked about, we have just provided a, a analytical framework to look at uh, home range transient. Um, however, it's sort of just a, a quick fix to a much deeper issue, which is that we still cannot solve for this evection diffusion equation. Um, until recently, that is, when, when uh, my collaborator and I have found a uh, computational software based on finite volume method um, using uh, Python. And what that is capable of doing, as you remember from the, one of the previous plot, you have uh, the steady state home range and one dimensional space on the left here. If we implement this phi pi um, platform, we can see sort of a time-dependent solution that gradually evolves to the steady-state solution. So in essence, we can retain the rigor of the analytical mechanistic home range equation, um, but at the same time, get all the intermediate information out of it. Just speed this up a little bit. As you can see, it works out quite well. So to put this to the test, um, some of you guys might know uh, this famous territoriality model where uh, uh, they looked at how ter territories between conspecifics are formed between uh, neighboring wolves. And what the wolves do is they leave scent marks at a certain rate, but when they detect the, the presence of a neighbor, they will leave more scent marks at the same time. They will move faster towards their own uh, den site. So to capture this entire process, the uh, original set of equations uh, is listed there. You basically have uh, two coupled sets of uh, advection diffusion equations, which makes solving, um, even in terms of say, say solutions, an absolute nightmare. But we can utilize the transient uh, phi pi toolkit to, to do the same thing for us. So basically, what you see on the left hand side here, this is a steady state solution. You basically have a boundary separations between the neighbors, so you have a dip in in terms of um, in terms of the individual space use. But at the same time, the, uh, that dip is only um, established by this buffer zone uh, due to increased net marking in that in that area. So if we allow individuals uh, to start from the same location uh, at time zero and let it evolve. will eventually converge on the predicted steady state solution. Like so. And in two dimensional space, you have individual one, individual two, a cumulative um, space use, and the lower right is the uh, cumulative scent mark density. So you almost get sort of a uh, cell division-like kind of picture going on here. Fast forward a bit. And there you go. So, Hopefully, this new computational platform can open the door to um, further uh, analysis, especially in the direction of, of home range or, or generally movement transient. Um, and um, currently, uh, my PI Alan Hastings and Mark Lewis, Luca Borger, and I were writing a review paper on transient movement ecology for um, uh, ecology letters. So, if you guys have any ideas, please let me know. 
and thank you. We've got time for questions. Right. So, yeah. So, what what one of the implication of this entire analysis um, is that we do have to redefine what a home range is, at least mathematically. So, uh, at least with the opinion of of Luca and Mark, um, we think that uh, home range instead of just being uh, a equilibrium space use, it, it it should be more of a potential space use uh, during certain sort of uh, moment in time. Um, so. That, that is one of the complications that arises from this. Um, but um, yeah, at least the steady state kind of definition what will be more relaxed. Is there, is there a second part to that question? OK. Yeah. The, the, Prey density. Yes, yes. Uh, we just have to actually go ahead and code it up, but yeah, it's doable. But even even in that paper, they're still looking at state state solutions. They're just varying the parameters. Right. Well, with that model, I mean, it's technically still not transient. They're still solving for the equilibrium. They're just tweaking the parameters and say, this is the new equilibrium. Right, right. Mm, yeah. Yeah, basically, this model can reproduce everything that they've done, but it also provides information that is missed from that model. For instance, when a home range center uh, relocates to a more distant site at a, at a faster rate than, say, an individual can move, there's usually an expansion in the individual space use before it then converging on the new site. So all of that gets kind of buried in the earlier model. But those, those pro that very process can be potentially ecologically significant because that might impact um, mating opportunities or you know, foraging opportunities and so on. All right, folks, we've got an 